I say destroy them. Israel then shall dwell in safety alone. The fountain of Jacob shall be upon a land of corn and wine. Also his heavens shall drop down dew. Let's read it again from verse 27. The eternal God is thy refuge. And underneath are everlasting arms. And he shall thrust out the enemy from before thee. And shall say destroy them. Israel then shall dwell in safety. The Lord bless his word in Jesus name. I'm speaking on the refuge. For the saint. Three things I would like you to note as. A foundation for this study is first. We live in a very perilous world and at a very perilous time. According to 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 1. We live in a very perilous world at a very perilous time. Very dangerous world. Very highly pressured world. Second thing to note here is that we live in a world of enemy arrows and missiles. Arrows, missiles of all sorts. That was why he said take the shield of faith that you can use to quench flaming arrows of wickedness. We live in a world of enemy arrows. Arrows and missiles. Thirdly, we live in a world of unforeseeables and satanic hyperactivity. A world of unforeseeable. There is something we call hyperkinetic syndrome, attention deficit disorder. That, that affects some children. Satan is the father of it. The Bible said God speaking to Job. In Job chapter 1 verse 7 said. God is asking Satan. And, and the Lord said unto Satan. Where are you coming from? Then Satan answered the Lord and said. From going to and fro in the earth. And from walking up and down in it. Satan is hyper active. To and fro. Up and down. Causing havoc. Job chapter 2 verse 2 also says the same. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. So we live in the world. Very perilous world. And at, at a very perilous time, we live in a world of enemy arrows and missiles. We live in a world of unforeseeables and satanic Chapter 54 and in verse 17 he said, No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment, thou shalt condemn. Them. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. No weapon formed shall prosper. First John chapter 5 verse 4 he said you are of first John chapter 4 verse 4 you are of God little children and you have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than the wicked devil
devil and his wicked arrows and his wicked missiles that are in the world. A victory existed before our battle. And then he followed it up to say, whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. So, the saint is in a world of uncertainty. I am covered. What is the meaning of refuge? Refuge means shelter. It means sanctuary. These are synonyms for refuge. It and families are in danger and, and they run to some countries like America and for Britain and so on to, for asylum, for protection, to be shielded. Shelter, it means sanctuary, it means asylum. It means shield. It means cover. Refuge means safe heaven. Hiding place. Again, it means shelter. It means sanctuary. It means asylum. Shield. Cover. Save heaven. Hiding place. So when we are talking about hiding place. So we are talking about the shelter. We are talking about the sanctuary. That the child of God has in a world like this. We are talking about island we have. The shield, the cover, the safe heaven. And the hiding place. Hallelujah. So what do we have as refuge? In our own set of vision. What do you run into? What is your hiding place? What is your bomb shelter? What is your missile shield? Number one is the almighty God himself. The almighty God is our number one refuge, our number one hiding place, our number one bomb shelter, and our number one missile shield, the almighty God. In Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 27, Deuteronomy 33 and in verse 27, it said, the eternal God is your refuge. Underneath him are everlasting arms. He shall thrust out the enemy. Then you shall dwell in safety. The almighty God himself is our refuge himself. In Psalm 9 verse 9. It reiterates the point. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed. A refuge of Lassa fever. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed. A refuge in time of trouble. He is our hiding place. Psalm 27 verse 1. If you look at that, it says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes came upon me to eat me or eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. He said, for in the time of trouble, he shall hide me by himself. In the secret of his tabernacle, shall he hide me, he shall set me upon a rock. That's right. He will hide me, himself will hide me inside himself. And no devil can find whom God hides. No witch can find whom God hides. No affliction can find whom God hides. No force from hell can find whom God hides. Psalm 46 verse 1 to 3. I'll read verse 1 to 3 in the first instance. It said, God.
God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, will not we fear, though the earth be removed, roar and be troubled though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof Sila who will not be moved go to verse 7 6, six eight. the kingdoms were moved then he Jehovah uttered his voice the earth melted the Lord of hosts is with us the God of Jacob is our refuge verse 11 God is our refuge. Psalm 46, 11. God is our refuge. Psalm 46, verse 11. The Lord of hosts is with us. Refuge number one is God himself. In Isaiah chapter 25, verse 4. Isaiah chapter 25 and in verse 4. He said, for thou hast been a strength to the poor. A strength to the needy in his distress. A refuge from the storm. See? A shadow from the heat. When the blast of the terrorist, terrorist ones, is as a storm against the wall. God can be your bomb shelter when they are. There is a blast. Wow. How is it achieved? How is the all That the shadow of the Shaddai, El Shaddai. Dwell in this, the life of communion, unbroken communion. That climate where you are aware that God is with you. That climate where you arrive and God shows up. Where people encounter, when once people encounter you, they feel God. Chapter 6, 12 and in verse. And killing people. And a believer, a child came. Stood in front of his house. And he declared, I draw the bloodline around the perimeter of this house. In the name of Jesus, I draw the bloodline around the perimeter of this house. In the name of Jesus, I draw the bloodline. And they went to bed and slept. They woke up in the morning. And the exact perimeter, the boundary of the house. They saw the two foxes lying at the exact boundary, dead. Most likely the devil sent them to enter that house. And as soon as they came to the boundary of the blood, they fell. They, they collided with the blood and died. No devil can cross the blood. No power, no witch can cross the bloodline. Are you hearing me? That was Joshua chapter 2 verse 15 where he talked about Rahab's house. Then she let down, them down by a cord through the window. For her house was upon the town wall. And she dwelt upon the wall. Rahab, leave that. It was cheap for her to crash with the wall. But they were still in, inside the house. While the whole of the wall and every other thing had crashed, she was still inside the house. Until they were brought out. So in my mind, there is one remain standing. 
And that was the segment that the house they found. There will be nobody to rescue. But they came and brought them out of the house. Which means the house was still there. He is the almighty God himself. Number two is the blood of Jesus. Don't, don't play with the blood. Whether with the communion. Or whether with making demands of the blood at a, at a place of prayer. Establishing the bloodline by faith. And establishing the speakings of the blood upon yourself. Your family. Your loved ones. By faith. The blood is our refuge. Our shelter. Our shield. Number three is the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord, scripture said in Proverbs chapter 18 verse, the righteous runneth into it and is safe. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and is safe. The, the name of the Lord is a shelter. It's a place of refuge. The righteous run into the name and they are safe. Thy name, every time the name is called, an anointing is released. That anointing is a shield. First of all, he said, he said, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. So, the name of the Lord is not just a noun. It is a house. The righteous run into it and they are saved. Look at Psalm 20 and in verse 1. He said, the Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. Hmm. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee. So the name of the Lord is a defense. The name, and somebody is saying, but you are talking. Struggling to live at birth. And when he told me, I said, I, I, I just prayed over the phone to me. I said, the name of the God of Jacob defend this child. The name of the Lord defend this child. The name of the Lord answered and defended that child. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. God exalted him. Philippians chapter, knee of witch, knee of wizard, knee of corona, knee of, 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 of wickedness. Every knee should bow of things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The name. So you have the presence of the Father. You have the name of the Lord. The name of the God of Jacob. The name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, I declare the divine cover. I declare the defense of the Lord upon my life, upon my family, upon the work of my hands. In the name of Jesus, I declare the refuge over my life. Jesus. Wow. Psalm 91 verse 4. He said, he shall cover you with his feathers. And under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be. The revelation in your heart concerning God's preservation power for you determines your protection. Who is he? The word. Who is the word? God. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. 
The same was in the beginning with God. So every word of God is pure. He, God, who is also the word, is a shield. Is a shield. To those who trust in him. Place it on the screen again. Again, Proverbs 30 verse 5. He's a shield. Every word of God, God Almighty, He, the word of God, is a shield unto them that put their trust in Him. What is God speaking to you tonight? Don't move about with an empty heart. Move about with a loaded heart. Don't live your life to chance. Live your life by light. Don't live your life to chance. Live by light. Live by revelation. Let there be at least one scripture that is keeping you alive on the earth. That is forbidding the devil from wasting your life. At least one or two or three verses that you are aware of in the scripture. That is established like a fact in your heart. That you are not here to be wasted like that. Then, you have a refuge in that light, in that revelation, and in that shield. Hallelujah. The almighty God himself, the blood of Jesus, the name of the Lord, the truth and light of the word. Number five is the glory of the Lord. And the Lord will create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion and upon her assemblies a cloud and a smoke by day and the shining of a flaming fire by night. For upon all, the glory shall be a defense. The glory of God is a defense. The glory of God is a shelter. The glory of God is a shield. That was that glory that shielded Moses. In Numbers chapter 31 to 45, Number 16, 41 to, he said, but on, on the morrow, all the congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, saying, you have killed the people of the Lord. And it came to pass when the congregation was gathered against Moses and against Aaron, that they looked toward the tabernacle of the congregation, and behold, the cloud covered it and the glory. of the Lord appear. They carry stone to stone them and the glory of the Lord appear. And Moses and Aaron came before the tabernacle of the congregation. Say 14, now they that died in that plague were 14,700 beef. Apart from those that has died, that had died about the matter of the Korah. Of Korah by the power of the glory. When you carry glory, you are shielded and sheltered from enemy wickedness, from the plagues on the earth. And how do you carry the glory? The glory flows in the direction of deep worship. Second Chronicles 5 13 and 14, where the, the, the people were worshiping and praising God, the glory of the Lord fell. If you are a worshiper, you are a praiser, you are a thanksgiver, not a murmurer, not a grumbler. Anything God is doing, when you are like that, you will never experience glory. And if the glory is absent from your life, you are vulnerable. Because it is the glory that is the defense. You see, we have many shelters. Just that we are, we are not applying them. We are not utilizing them. We are not making demands on them. The glory of the Lord was number five. Number six is faith and trust in God. Faith and trust in God. Ephesians chapter six verse six.
high tower, my refuge, my savior, thou savest me from violence. Psalm 91 verse 2. He that dwelleth in the sacred place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Trust in the Lord establishes the refuge around you. Them an evident token of perdition, but to you, of salvation and that of God. Hallelujah. So, your conviction is strong. It flows into strong declarations. It flows into very strong positive actions where you are leaving zero room to fear. This shelters you. The opposite of faith, which is fear, doubt, and unbelief, makes you vulnerable. It invites disaster. So, faith and trust in God is your refuge number six and number seven to fear and the only person you are permitted to fear is God it's the fear of God it was John Wesley who said I'm too afraid of God to be afraid of man fear of God look at what I just said now in Isaiah chapter 8 verse 13 and in verse 14 let him alone be your dread and he shall be for his sanctuary. Full stop. Let your fear only be the fear of God above the fear of anything and that fear of God shelter. That fear of God will build around you an anti-ballistic missile shelter. Don't fear the devil, but fear God. See, when Proverbs 14, 26, it said, in the fear of the Lord is strong confidence and his children shall have a place of refuge. The place of ref the fear of the Lord is your place of refuge. Inside the fear of the Lord, you are, you are on his strong confidence. And his children shall have a place of refuge. I tell you a story. Many years ago, a judge came to me who has been a, a judge, a, a high court judge for many years, a judge for over 30 something years. He was experiencing some diabolic attacks. He said to me, he was presiding over a case, I think of culpable homicide or something. Somebody killed somebody. And the person was guilty as charged. And he was going to meet out capital punishment as prescribed by the constitution. Before the case could finish, the people came to talk to him to try to compromise him. That he would sit inside the court at times. When it was time for the case, his hand would be vibrating. He can't write anything, he can't say anything. And he came to meet me. I went to the state where he was a judge. And he said to me, Pastor, I want you to pray for me. It is, it's a statement that not many Nigerians can make. He said to me, Pastor, if since I have been a judge for over 30 years, I have collected one naira as bribe from anybody to influence any case, let their charm succeed. He said, but if I have not taken one naira from nobody, pray for me. What they are doing will not work. Wow. When I heard that, it charged me up. It charged me up and I, I released every fire I could muster against that devil. You have mean, the man's testimony has, has, has given you an underbelt blow, Satan. His integrity is speaking. Command you to be silenced. That was the end of that satanic agenda. Did you hear that? In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence. If I have taken one naira as bribe, let what they are doing win. 
Please that scripture there again. Proverbs 4. With bribe, I haven't opened the door for the devil to attack me. And his children shall have a place of refuge. What will you say to your maker if you die while doing abortion? What will you do in eternity? Oh. In the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord tendeth to life. And he that has it shall abide satisfied. He shall not be visited with evil. Evil would know the road to his house. He who has the fear of the Lord. This fear of the Lord is your shelter, is your shield, is your protector. If you operate like you don't have a conscience, your life does not have a covering. If you operate permanently violating conscience, you are terminating every cover on your life. You see? Right from this world into eternity, you made yourself vulnerable. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, according to Proverbs chapter 8 and in verse 13. Is to hate evil, to hate iniquity. You are not dabbling in bribery and dabbling in corruption. You are not dabbling into filthiness and unrighteous, ungodly living. You, you maintain a conscience that remains clean between you and God on a permanent basis. When you are in that position, the fear of the Lord itself becomes your shelter. It becomes your covering. It becomes your refuge. What is your refuge? The Almighty God, the blood of Jesus. The name of the Lord. The truth and the light of the word. The glory of the Lord. Faith and trust in God. And finally, the fear of God. It's a new day for you. Lift up your hands wherever you are and give him the praise.